Ann Murray's one of my favorites in uh, the early stages of my radio career. And by the way, this is a lady whose career has spanned three decades, like four Grammy Awards, 40 million records sold. One of my favorite songs always has been Snowbird. It's mm -hmm. such a pleasant sounding song, and I've been humming it all day since knowing she was going to be here. Have you seen her new music, though? Yes. What a wonderful world. Music. 26 inspirational classics is out. And the thing about it is... We did not know that she was having a tough time personally mm -hmm. in her True. family until we saw the cover of People magazine. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it by now. How I Saved My Daughter. Dawn is here with her today to talk a little bit about anorexi anorexia and right. how they are overcoming this as a family. Right. Here's Anne Murray and her daughter, Dawn. <laughs> Hey, you know, when you, I, I tell you, it's, it's, it's a coup to be on the cover of People magazine. Isn't, it's got to be weird when you're walking through the airport or a newsstand or any place like that and you see your face prominently displayed there. You get a lot of instant recognition. Pretty much. Oh, yeah? They, they just, did you, did you go up and buy a copy for yourself? I bought several. <laughs> well, now, anorexia is something that I'm sure is very difficult to talk about, a very uh, trying family situation. Why did the two of you decide to go public? And I wonder, is it, was it your idea, Anne, or yours, Dawn? Well, it was a, I think it was a combination of both. I think um, we just really, really want to help people that are in this situation. And, you know, this was one way to do it, you know, because of my mom's career. Well, the way it started, we were doing a benefit um, for a, an eating disorder drop-in center in Toronto. And in order to publicize this benefit, mm -hmm. we had to talk about it. And I was going to be doing a concert, but I couldn't publicize it without her. It wasn't any point in my talking about it without her being there. Right. So I asked her if she would help me out and she went, oh, I know it's tough. Yeah, see, I don't want to talk about this. And I went, well, you don't have to. I just thought I'd ask. And, mm -hmm. and, and she did sing with me, though, in, yeah. the, in the show and, and decided, well, let's do it. And it was very brave because it is very personal. It's private. something that both of you have been battling when you think about yes, it. Yes, I'll say. <laughs> it's, a, it's a family illness, you know. Yeah. You can't really, you know, blame anybody, but it's everybody's involved. Well, yeah. which brings up the point that in the treatment there is family counseling. So in the, this talking out and relating to your family again, what have you found out about yourself? Why did this happen to you? Why did you stop eating and want to lose so much weight? Well, I think there's quite a few reasons why. Um, I can't really uh, say, you know, what really would have done it for me, but I mean, there were, there were a few different aspects of it that, um, but I think one that was really important was I wasn't telling my mother or anybody basically how I was feeling about anything. And that's a really important thing to do when, you know, you're living in life and you're coming into situations where you do get upset and you do get, you know, happy about things or upset or, you know, whatever, angry or... Well, you weren't there a lot, right? Well, she explained it to me that she, uh, she wanted to be the perfect child. So she wouldn't do anything to rock the boat. She wouldn't get angry. Mm. She wouldn't express any kind of emotion. So she repressed everything, and it just got to the point where it just blew up right. into this full-fledged illness. Well, as Lorianne mentioned, I, I'm sure there's pressure on you unknowingly, because uh, Lorianne mentioned you're probably not there because the business that you're in mm -hmm. takes you away from home. Well, so how did you does. go about discovering that the, the problem well, was there? Well, no, I, I have been away a lot. Yeah, but, but not all but the I've time. Done it, that, sure. But I've done it in such a way that I was never aw away from home for any more than two weeks at a time. There Certainly. are those people who go away for months at a time. Right. I didn't ever do that once I had children. Um, and so... Of course, I felt, as soon as we found out that she had anorexia, I felt guilty. I said, I said I'm the reason. Because she used to cry every time I left. She would stand at the front door and she would cry that I was leaving. And it, it made, made me, I, I was horrible. And so I said to her one time, please don't do that. It, it, it makes me crazy when you do that. I feel guilty enough as it is. So she stopped crying. There I was telling her how to feel. Mm. And that's wrong. You know, you have to be able to let those things go. You have to be able to let... And so she, you know, that's... that's but you can't blame yourself. There are all kinds of reasons 
why these things happen okay. and and I'm told that, that that many people have a predisposition for it then there are these triggers mm -hmm. well for instance Dawn wanted to be a model right yeah so she <laughs> went to modeling agencies well, did they tell you to lose weight or suggest they not did. tell you but suggest it they did at a hundred about it was uh, 130 pounds they told me I needed to lose about 10 or 15 pounds oh boy. she was she's five foot nine and a half yeah, oh come I mean, on yeah she, she weighed well, 130 pounds and they told her to lose 15 I said over my dead body yeah, yeah. hey wait a minute you know there's so much emphasis now in Hollywood and the high-profile personalities on radio and television that you've got to be not radio and films and television that that you have to be thin as a rail to be accepted and get the jobs. I, I talked to a man yesterday who said, these women cannot be doing this for men. Men because don't. men don't like that. I no, don't, don't really. Men don't do. like the no. paper, at least the ones that I've talked to. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on there, but these are the idols. Well, did, did this sort of thing, this high profile visibility of thinness, have any effect on you? Did that? I say mean, it did put it did put pressure on me, but okay. I also let it put pressure on me. Right. So I mean, it's about taking responsibility for my own feelings as well, and you know, making sure that I'm okay with me and you know, feeling more confident about myself, and that's what my therapy has basically been about. Okay. So is the therapy over? Are you over the hump? Is everything okay, or will no. it ever be totally okay? Well, I think it's a maintained thing, and I. I don't ever want to say that I'm recovered because, you know, it could snap at me one day and I could just go into total relapse. But if you say that you're recovering, it's like a one day at a time thing. It's, you know, progress, not perfection. And, you know, that's what I've been trying to do. What are you doing differently to support her, Anne? I'm doing nothing differently at all. I'm really? just there. Hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm there. I always have been. Yeah. Uh, from day one. I mean, the day that we were told that she had this, um, I was there. I just said, that's it. You know, I think it's important to point out that this sort of disease, I guess you'd refer to it as is a, a disease, disease or a disorder. disorder. People I, sometimes don't like to use the word disease, but I, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something that really is going to change life, have a huge impact, and it's something that needs to be, I guess, discovered early mm -hmm. in order to conquer yeah, it, right? Well, I was very fortunate because she came to me, and they tell me it's very unusual for someone as young as 18. Mm -hmm. I knew there was something wrong. I tried to talk to her for at least a year, and she wouldn't talk to me, and she kept... When I would come home, she would eat. Right. And when I left, she would stop well, eating. Well, you see, it's, it's more than just not eating and losing weight. Your muscles, about, your muscles are affected. I mean, your entire body is it's not about is food. It's, it's, it's really not about food. Right. It's about what she's talking about, repressed feelings. Yeah. Teenagers have no... I mean, they have control over nothing, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. They're told what to do. They have to go to school. They have to do any... But, so the only thing they can control, and certainly in Dawn's case, yeah. was she, could, she couldn't control my leaving, but she could control this food thing, and I, I think you, get, they get a, you get a buzz from it. Right. Aha, this is one thing I can Interesting. do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other moms, other parents are going to want advice from you. Are you willing to give it, or do you prefer not to? Well, I know very little about it, except what's happened with us. You know, I think you just have to be there for them. If they don't come to you, she came to me. And she said, Mom, I need help. And yet, when I, and I made an appointment right away, and yet, when we were going, she wasn't coming with me. Because yeah. she said, I'm okay today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Today. And then the same thing happened. I have to tell you, but when she was diagnosed, I was in the doctor's office, and she said to me, your daughter is a classic case of anorexia nervosa. And I just... I, it's funny because I, deep down I knew, but when you're told, it's different. Yes. And then she told me that there was a 10% chance of recovery. Whoa. Are you kidding? I'm 10%? not kidding. At, that's what they told me. Yeah. This is what, what I heard this? all How the How long ago day. was this? Oh, this was uh, two and a half years ago. Okay. However, you know, when you first, when you hear the anorexia, it was like I said in the article, it's like being punched in the stomach. But then, but what she meant was, there's a 10% chance of complete recovery. I didn't hear the whole thing. Right. There are, there's a much larger percentage uh, of people who actually live with it and live with it quite well and get on with their and lives. That's and and that's where right. Dawn is right now. She's, she's recovering. And right. Mm -hmm. And she is, uh, as a matter of fact, she's making some progress. She's making it with you. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll hear about their project together. After this. <laughs> Thank you.
thriving project together in just mm -hmm. a few minutes. I had one more question about the uh, anorexia and your recovery. Uh, you were talking uh, about the fact that you hid this for so long. What uh, gave you the guts or the, or the bravery to finally go to your mom and break down and admit it? Well, I'm not so sure that it was bravery, but at, at some points when you're starving like that, it's like you break down and you just don't know what's going on. You don't know how you're feeling. You don't know what's you can't what's think. what you can't think your mind your is mind starved is, as well yeah and so at this point I was just like I don't know what to do just help me please I don't know what's wrong with me and then um, the next day you know after I had a had sleep and, and a big cry and a big and cry and, and all the rest of it I was like no I'm fine now really you know it was sort of I I fell back into into denial so but when she was in hospital she called me every day didn't matter where I was. Please get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want. She didn't want to do this. She didn't want like, to talk about her feelings. Camp. She didn't want to talk about the fact that her parents' marriage was failing, and mm -hmm. she didn't want to talk about these things. She wanted to ignore them. Mm -hmm. and, but is, uh, every, is everything an okay subject now? You two can talk about well, anything together. Oh my goodness, there isn't anything that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was so funny. Our producer Stephen came up just before they came out and said, "You're not going to believe it, but Ann and Don are having chair races out in the hallway right That's now. Right. <laughs> their chairs in their dressing rooms have rollers, and they do. So, so uh, fun, by the way. Well, she did. Yeah. Youth uh -huh. always wins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, now, now it's always good in this situation, I guess, to have something else to focus on. In this particular yeah. case, you guys have a musical project together. When did you find and out that she could sing? Well, I found out uh, about last summer. Well, obviously you sing around the house a lot, right? Yeah, when I say, but professionally, yes. yeah. But she doesn't. I didn't know she could sing. How really? Find out? Why? <laughs> you hide a lot of things, girl. <laughs> she, that's the thing, you see. They, they, they hide everything. And this was a surprise to me. She brought this tape home. She went to one of those karaoke bars or booths or something and brought home this tape and played it for me and I went I was having lunch and I started listening to this thing and I went <gasps> <laughs> I couldn't believe this voice I said is that you and she said yeah I said I don't believe it. But Don, why did you never sing in front of your mom? Show her what you really had. Well, if your mother was in, would you sing in front of her? Well, I mean, how critical was she? Well, obviously, she loved it, but I mean, do you find all of a sudden you've got this built in coach who's always going to say, well, hey, I sing mean, some more? I mean, in the studio, it was amazing because she has, you know, her experience. Yeah. How many years? This is the number of years. The number of years yeah. experience. And uh, it was just great. I mean, she taught me so much, and she was, you know, there with me the whole time, you know, supporting me and, you know, helping me out. Well, the way it came about was that we were doing this inspirational album. The record company saw her perform with me right. at this charity, and they went, oh, we have to have her on this inspirational album. Mm. Do you have a song? And I said, no, I don't. That very night, I got home, and there was a FedEx <laughs> package with a tape in it from Amy Skye, who is a local singer-songwriter. It was a duet. Now, when this is in the middle of an inspiration, this is enough to make people believe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there I was, and, and the, here was the tape. And she had seen us on a television show, not unlike this, mm -hmm. talking about it in Canada, and was inspired to write this song for us. So that's how the duet came about. There were cameras in the studio. We'll roll a little bit mm -hmm. of it so you can see what we're talking about. <laughs> to you that mom and Murray is bowled over by your singing talent. Well, that blew me away. I was just like, wow. She was in shock. I was, because I just, 
I never thought about it. I mean, I, I sang on one of her albums before that, and it was only background vocals, and mm -hmm. I had a really good time doing that, too, but I never really did solo work at all, so it was sort of, it was different. It was really fun. Okay, what, what are your future aspirations? What do you want to do? I mean, after having a taste of this, is this the direction you want well, to go? Is that the direction you had intended? Well, music is, is just such a passion for me right now, and I mean, I found that out in treatment, which was great, that it was, it was such a passion that I wanted to really, you know, pursue it. So that's hopefully, you know, let's just hope. How do you Good feel feeling. about that, Anne? Because you, you know the ups and downs of the whole business. Sure. Well, Dawn was in university for three weeks this fall. <laughs> that's how long it lasted. <laughs> 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 I was I was gung ho to get her well. That's the only thing I could think of. of. Let's get her well before she gets into this business it's called show business. It's tough. Yeah. So I thought, well, maybe you should go to school. And so she said, okay. <laughs> I'll do it for you. I'll do it for you. And so mm -hmm. she was there three weeks, and then she just started. She stopped eating again. You know, it was the old. She mm -hmm. wasn't happy. It's not what she wanted. There's no way I can discourage somebody who has a passion for singing. This is what I wanted <laughs> yes. to do. This is what I've done. So how could I discourage her from doing it? I can't. You know, you, you bring up an interesting point. Going back to our conversation, you are away from home. Who polices you? Who helps you in the event that you fall back into this? rut of not wanting to eat. Uh, well, like the thing that. is, is that I, right now I do it for myself because that's how you get better. And at, at, a, at one point I probably couldn't have done that for myself, but now I can. Good. And now it just, I come back to reality and I go, oh, okay, well now this, I felt this feeling and I can move on from it. So mm -hmm. She has how, big, big wonderful. cries. Oh yeah. For like an hour, two hours, big cries. She lays it all on me. She feels just terrific. <laughs> and <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> For three days I'm a wreck. Well, you know what? You're going to have to pay for her to go yeah. off into <laughs> but you know, the thing is, people watching this, I mean, you should be so proud and, and so happy of the relationship the two of you have. Oh, we have awesome. always yeah. had a wonderful yeah. relationship, even when, we were, when she was a little tiny girl. The relationship has always been there. And it's better now because we communicate better. That's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. It shows. And, and not to get too dramatic, but do uh, the songs on What a Wonderful World mean even more to you now that you've been through some tough times? Well, and you know it's what? funny about that because when I started it, it wasn't premeditated none of this, but too many things happened while I was doing it. I mean, all of this happened while I was doing this album, and I went, there's been some divine intervention here, you know? So, I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I'm grateful right now, sure. I can tell you. Well, it really is a beautiful thing. What a wonderful world. And we thank both of you for coming on and uh, sure. talking about this. And I hope you continue to talk about it, because you do it so beautifully, and uh, I know you can help a lot of people. A lot of smiles on your faces. Good to see you. Dawn and Ann. Thank you.